Hello, Earth Signs. Happy New Year. It's Carolina at White Wolf Mystic. Um, I wanted to first thank you guys for being so patient for me um, posting these videos. I came up, came down with a cold over the holidays and I had pretty much no voice for several days, so I wasn't able to record. Um, I still am recovering a little bit, so I may be taking some sips of water during our reading. But <clears throat> January is going to be a very busy month for the collective, especially uh, Earth signs, because we've got a lot going on in the cosmos. It's gonna be a very significant year. I did a video recently talking about the astrology of 2020, so I highly recommend you watch that if you aren't already aware of what's going on. I'll post that link below. I'll also be hosting an Instagram live discussion session about the astrology of 2020 on Thursday, January 9th at 7 p.m. So feel free to join me on Instagram if you have questions and want to have an opportunity to learn more specifically how the astrology of 2020 will affect you. Um, and also if you want to stay up to date on the cosmos, the forecasts, as well as what I'm currently offering in terms of readings and classes, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter as well. And I will post that link below. So let's go ahead and get started with the earth signs. I'm going to start with Capricorn since we are in Capricorn season and you guys have so much going on this month. So as I'm recording this, we've got five planets plus the south node all in Capricorn. That's a lot of very potent, very powerful energy. I'm sure you Capricorns are feeling it. It's going to be a very significant year for you guys because we've got Jupiter moving through Capricorn this entire year. So the house of your sun, as well as any other planets you have in Capricorn, are going to be influenced by Jupiter. Jupiter is the great benefic. He brings opportunities and expansion. So this is really your year to expand your sense of self. You'll have more opportunities coming your way, as well as more challenges to grow beyond your comfort zone, especially with this um, Saturn-Pluto conjunction we've got coming up on the 12th. That is going to be really about tearing down old systems and structures in our collective, things that are no longer working, especially in you know banking and government, <clears throat> things like that. So it is going to push all of us to move beyond these old stagnant systems. But for you in particular, if you do feel pressure to grow beyond your comfort zone, know that that's what Saturn and Pluto are trying to initiate in you is that soul expansion and growth so let's go ahead and get started with your reading <clears throat> capricorn we've also got a full moon and a full moon eclipse in cancer on january 10th that's going to be in the house opposite your sun so whatever house that rules you'll be working on those themes as well and a new moon in aquarius on the 24th so what energy is Capricorn working with? Mm -hmm. We have Porcupine Spirit, time for beginner mind. So yeah, as I just mentioned, you know, all this energy, <clears throat> we've got Saturn, Pluto, the Sun, Mercury, all converging around 22 degrees Capricorn on Sunday, January 12th. So a lot of very potent energy. Um, some There may be some revelations. There may be some things that you are shedding light on in your life that need to change or evolve. You know, Saturn is the taskmaster. Saturn wants you to be more responsible and accountable for your life and the choices you're making. And Pluto really wants to see you transform things that are no longer serving you. So it can feel, depending on your perspective and what you're currently going through, it can feel very uncomfortable, but know that the planets are just trying to help you become your highest and best self. It can feel very empowering and exciting. If, you, if you've been putting in a lot of time and work and effort over the past months and years, then you may start to see some real progress this year. But either way, beginner mind right? Paving the way for new opportunities, new perspectives, new projects, new people, okay? So let me see what else we've got going on Capricorn for you. Pulling a few tarot cards. Yeah, not surprised. That's cards coming up. Okay. So for the month of January, we do have the tower, which I'm not surprised because that Saturn-Pluto conjunction is going to be very much a tower moment, not just for Capricorns, but for all of the collective. It is a transit that takes place only once every 34 years. It's very historical. And when that transit does come around, Saturn conjunct Pluto, we do see major, major shifts in the collective. Um, 
and the sign of Capricorn, you know, government, finance, how we relate to those old structures that are no longer serving us. So within your own life, there may be a tower moment where some things have to fall and collapse that are stagnant, right? Anything that's really truly meant for you and as a part of your highest growth can never be lost. The things that are crumbling are your old belief systems, you know, a version of yourself that you've simply outgrown, but perhaps you're afraid to let go of. Or maybe there's some relationships that are toxic or are no longer serving your highest good that may, you know, move to the wayside now, may fall away. So there's definitely going to be a tower moment um, for you Capricorns this month. But we've got the Queen of Cups here. So with this, I'm seeing it's really important self-care for you in January. And I have also got the Hermit. So I'm seeing that January may not be the best month for you guys to be super busy and, and try and be productive and accomplish and go, go, go. You know, it may be very triggering for a lot of you. So recognize that January may be a month spent more in reflection, um, spending time renewing and rebuilding after these tower moments or thinking about what you want to rebuild or what needs to fall away. Um, you know, definitely lots of alone time. And then Queen of Cups, like I said, is self-care. It's nurturing and compassion. So being extra compassionate towards yourself for whatever comes up is going to be a major theme for you guys in January. Okay. <clears throat> Just cultivating that time and space for not just reflection, but for presence, to just be fully present in the moment with whatever you are feeling, even the dark thoughts or the ugliness or the anger or the resistance, you know, whatever uncomfortable emotions may come up and they're perfectly understandable and reasonable given, as I mentioned before, all this planetary energy that we have converging in the house of your sun. So being extra patient with yourselves, okay? Journaling, um, whatever creative process you have, exercise, getting outside in nature, especially you earth signs, spending time in nature this month will be crucial for you. So taking some more time to really get grounded in yourself and whatever it is that you're feeling and experiencing this month, okay? So again, if you do feel that pressure that you need to be producing or creating or staying on top of things this month, recognize that it might be a quieter month for you because you're going to be doing more inner inner work and shifting, okay? <clears throat> I'm sending a huge hug out to all of you Capricorns because you did a lot of work not only last year with all the eclipses and these heavy planets we've had, you know, Pluto's been in Capricorn since 2008. Saturn's been there since December 2017. Those are very heavy planets to be in your sign. So I know you guys are doing a lot of tough work and you receive all of my acknowledgement and praise for the work that you're doing. I know it's not always easy. Yeah. Support. I knew this card was going to come up. I knew it. I saw it in my mind's eye. Ask for help. Get more rest. Nurture yourself. Nurturing. And time alone. And reflection. It's going to be really important this month in uh, January. Capricorns. Asking for help. Spending time with family. And just asking for whatever you need. And doing whatever you need to do. <clears throat> to move through this transformative process. Okay. So let me pull a numerology card and let's see what else I want to pull. <clears throat> a time for healing. Yeah. Okay. A time for healing. So yeah, definitely some, some tower energy that you're working with this month and it's going to be very activating. Um, very triggering. I don't want to scare you guys. You know, it may be very uncomfortable for some of you that have been resisting change for a while. It will probably be the most uncomfortable for you. Um, but I'm guessing most of you, you've been feeling it coming. Again, whatever whatever house Capricorn rules in your birth chart, if it's the sixth house, then these matters will relate to your health. If it's the tenth, then career. Seventh would be, you know, love and relationships first house is your sense of self and identity. So wherever you've got Capricorn in your chart is where you're seeing a lot of major shifts and transformations. And they might not always be comfortable, but for those of you that are all about empowerment and whatever, you know, the best perspective to have is that whatever crises <clears throat> or 
changes come up for you this month, they really are serving your highest good. They are out of love and compassion and support for your highest potential. So try and take that perspective and do that inner work and assess how you are being asked to grow this month and recognize that it isn't always a comfortable process, right? When the shake sheds its, sheds its skin, when the butterfly emerges from the cocoon, there is some, some soreness, some growing pains as a result of that transformation. And so it's almost like nursing your wounds and allowing yourself to heal in your new skin that you're cultivating, not just this month, but this year, as well as the culmination of all the work you've been doing over the last several years. Okay, so time for healing. Make sure you're asking for support. All right, last message for you Capricorns. You really are the warriors of 2020, man. <clears throat> Through prayer and meditation, I create a ripple effect of peace in the world. Through prayer and meditation, I create a ripple effect of peace throughout the world. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, feel free to check out my Astrology of 2020 video. I do talk more in depth about what's going on this year and what 2020 is going to mean for the collective. Or feel free to join me on my Instagram live talk on the 9th at 7 p.m. Because this is really, you know, Capricorn's year. The energy and everything, it's all very... Capricornian this year we're all doing a lot of work in this field but because Capricorn is your sun sign that's really your identity in many ways you're not only doing your own inner work but you're doing a lot of work on behalf of the collective right to help the rest of us also process and move forward and create new and more stable structures and foundations that will help serve all of us in the long term in the future and to cultivate a greater sense of self-mastery right which are all Capricornian themes so you guys are doing the heavy lifting this year. You are in the leadership position this year. So as I said, you know, you have all of my warmth and thanks on behalf of the collective for the work that you're doing. So just make sure that you ask for support this month, that you take plenty of time out to nurture yourself because the work that you're doing is really important. Okay. So that's your reading for January Capricorns. And I'll talk to you next month. All right. Moving on to <clears throat> Taurus. So Taurus, on January 10th, not only do we have a full moon in Cancer, full moon eclipse in Cancer, but we also have Uranus stationing direct in Taurus on that same day. Uranus is one of the outer planets. It's one of the heavy hitters in astrology. It entered Taurus in March of 2019. So I know a lot of you Tauruses have been feeling it because it's the house of your sun. Uranus is asking you all to reevaluate your sense of self and your identity and how you relate to stability and security. And you may be experiencing some upheaval in that area because Uranus is wanting you to change. So you may feel extra pressure on January 10th. Not only is it a full moon in Cancer, which is highly emotional, but it's an eclipse which can bring endings or closings or finalizing of lessons. But then we've got this major outer planet stationing direct in Taurus on the same day. So pay attention to whatever comes up for you on January 10th, um, whatever has been coming up for you leading up until then. Those are kind of the themes that you'll be working on this year, as well as whatever comes up for you on the 12th. And we have this major Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn, whatever house in your birth chart is ruled by Capricorn is the area where you're going to experience a lot of transformation and change this year. Um, so again, if you're not sure you don't have your birth chart, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I do offer free consultations and we can pull up your chart and, and go from there. But let's see what energy we're working with. Taurus in 2020. All right. <clears throat> Parrot spirit, watch your words. All right. So what about our words? I want to see what this has to do with. Let me pull some tarot cards before I start talking about that. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so with this, I'm actually getting your watching your words has to do with your perspective, because <clears throat> we've got three of cups, which is a cup 
a, a card of joy of reunion and time spent with friends. I feel like this is also what I was just talking about, this full moon and cancer, this eclipse where your station direct is going to have to do with your perspective, um, how you embrace change and are willing to shift and adjust according to whatever the universe is asking you to do. Because <clears throat> for the next six years, while Uranus is in Taurus, <coughs> excuse me, you guys are going to be doing a lot of transforming, a lot of changing. So going with the flow in terms of your perspective and being more flexible and resilient is what I'm seeing here. I'm definitely seeing some things are going to be revealed for you, Taurus, on the 10th, as well as this month of January in general. Um, you'll have more clarity as far as what to do next because you may have been feeling a lot of upheaval. Uranus is the planet of upheaval. So for the past year, you may have been experiencing some shifting and changing in your sense of self and your direction. So I'm seeing that you'll get some more clarity um, this month as far as which direction to take, okay? So again, paying attention to whatever comes up for you this month, especially on the 10th and around the 12th when we have this major um, Saturn-Pluto conjunction. It's going to give you some inspired ideas and perhaps um, visions or dreams or you'll see signs and symbols and they're all going to be helping to guide you towards what you're working on next. So paying attention to what comes up for you and being willing to be a little bit flexible and adaptable this month. Mm. leadership step into your leadership share your message inspire and empower others yes so i feel like taurus and capricorn you're both the earth signs stepping into leadership roles this year because we've got again these major planets these outer planets in capricorn saturn and pluto are in capricorn jupiter's in capricorn we've got uranus in Taurus and then Saturn as it approaches and enters Aquarius is gonna be forming a square to Uranus. So I feel like Capricorn and Taurus, you guys are doing a lot of the um, major shifting and heavy lifting for the collective right now. So recognize whatever is coming up for you. If you are being asked to change, if you are being asked to step up, what ways are you being asked to take the lead? Okay, because you're being asked by the universe to be of service right now and we are also grateful for you and the work that you're doing for us and on our behalf so what else we got mm -hmm. adjustments are required so yeah that's this you know being flexible in terms of your mindset so in this case, I'm seeing, you know, it could mean literally your words, being careful what you say. But I'm, I'm getting more your mindset, your mentality, your perspective, being willing to be flexible this month, Taurus, because you're going to be getting more clarity, right? That's what this is about, the judgment card. You're going to be getting more clarity as far as what direction you're moving in. So adjusting your mindset, being willing to be flexible in order to step into a role of leadership, okay? Final message for Taurus for January. The moment I embrace my peace within and surrender the outcome is the moment that the universe can truly get to work. The moment I embrace my peace within and surrender the outcome is the moment that the universe can truly get to work. So yeah. Being flexible and surrendering and allowing spirit to take the lead because you are being guided in into a leadership position. Okay, so surrender, flexibility are key words for you Tauruses this month. Okay, so that's the reading for Taurus for January. And I'll talk to you all next month. All right, last but not least, <clears throat> Virgo. Let's see what energy we're working with for Virgos in January. This and that are true. 
So this is about embracing duality, that there are two sides to every coin, and that both sides is valid given the right circumstance and perspective. So embracing opposites, seeing the truth in all situations can be indicated there. So let me see more specifically what this has to do with. Okay, so the first card I have is Page of Wands, which to me is very much a card of adventure, of travel, of exploring and experimenting and trying new things. It's kind of a, a very spontaneous, carefree energy. And then I've also got Queen of Pentacles, which is kind of the opposite. <laughs> She's very stable, very grounded, very calm, very focused and determined. She's very busy, working hard, building the life that she wants, supporting her family, being the matriarch. So what comes up for me immediately is that this is Spirit's way of saying you can do both, right? You can focus on <clears throat> being grounded and taking steps forward and providing for yourself and your own career and stability and being organized and on top of things while at the same time allowing for spontaneity and joy and creativity and impulsiveness, right? Sometimes, you know, impulsiveness is, you know, and you guys are a mutable sign, so impulsiveness isn't totally foreign to you, but, you know, impulsiveness is sometimes spirit's way of inspiring you, inspiring something within you to help guide you towards the direction that you're meant to go in. So it's finding a balance that it's never just one or the other. It's never being too structured and stable that you don't have any fun or play or you don't spontaneously do things and it's not being so spontaneous and wandering that you don't actually put your feet on the ground or take any strides forward towards creating and accomplishing what you want. So it's balance, but I'm seeing that both are true. They may seem like opposites, but they're not. They're both equally important. Okay. And it's all about our choices. So when choosing structure and stability, are you compromising a desire by choosing that? Or if you are choosing to just be going with the flow and creative and impulsive, are you sacrificing your structure and stability to do that? So it's it's checking in with yourself and your values, kind of represented by these cups. What are the things that are most important to you? And then gauging what is the right approach? Is the right approach to take a serious step forward or to commit to something and to be more rigid and determined or is the step that's going to best support your values be one of creativity and spontaneity and it's a moment to moment thing right this and that are true so i feel like that's what you guys are working on this month virgos is discerning when is the right time to use which approach and that neither one is good or bad they both have their time and place and how you can know that is by checking in with your values and your dreams and what you're really wanting to accomplish okay Ooh, three card cycles everything has its right time honor the cycles of your body tune into the moon's magic yeah so I feel like this is very much in alignment with this card too, because this is a water card. So a lot of emotions, you know, the moon and the water and emotions and subconscious are coming up in your reading, Virgo. And so recognizing that everything is a cycle, that there is no one right way or right definition for anything, that it's all moment to moment. Truth is subjective based on the circumstance, based on a soul's level of learning and readiness, you know, truth is very subjective in the spirit realm because what is true for a more advanced soul that has accomplished more and has learned more may not be true for a younger soul that is still learning the fundamentals. And the same goes with life, right? We're all at different stages of our evolution and what is true for someone at one point in their life may no longer be true at a different point. And so it's embracing that flexibility and recognizing the cycles of life and the different approaches that we might take at different points in life. Neither one of them are necessarily good or bad. So I feel like too, this is also about not being overly critical because you Virgos can sometimes be really hard on yourselves. You're very perfectionistic and it's 
wonderful thing about you that you have such high standards and that's why you're so good at whatever you do, but it's learning to temper that criticism, not being so hard on yourself, recognizing that everything is a learning experience, even if something doesn't turn out quite the way you wanted it to, it was still a very valuable learning experience. So going with the flow, recognizing those cycles, okay, <clears throat> is going to be a theme for you guys in January. Yeah. Bring love into the situation. So for you guys, this is significant because this is a new moon in Aquarius and we have a new moon in Aquarius this month. So this isn't a totally random card. Um, it's going to be at four degrees Aquarius on January 24th. So this may be a special message for you, Virgo. So this is an extra potent new moon for you guys to use because again, we did have the cycles card come up as well. So using this new moon to set your intentions of what you're wanting to manifest and then surrendering them and trusting in the divine could be very potent for you guys. So perhaps this is a message from spirit to really use this new moon cycle this month to jumpstart or kickstart whatever steps you're wanting to take in your life, relationships, projects, work, etc. All right. Final message for Virgos. <clears throat> Attack, pain, fear, judgment, and any form of separation are merely calls for help. Attack, pain, fear, judgment, and any form of separation are merely calls for help. Okay, so again, it's embracing that negativity the fear the anxiety the desire to control the fear of uncertainty whatever comes up for you this month again recognizing everything serves a purpose right this and that are true everything has a cycle and that all emotions and fears that come up are messages for you something to focus on or to resolve within yourself so again don't be so hard on yourself whatever comes up is what is asking for your attention at that time all right, so that is the reading for Virgos for January. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.